There, that bomb should help us out. Huh. 
It's just, why does it feel like no matter what we do in Alpha, we wind up hurting Dark Hill? We are down here to help the creature you heard. I know that, but I'm usually the one who drags us around trying to rescue animals. Why do you care so much? Is there something you're not telling me? No. Okay. Bloody half you five ever laid eyes on. It's not just in pain. It's trying to sing. It's the song of the sands. They don't normally sing like this underground. Is that what's causing the storm? Aye. Judging by all this hive matter weighing it down, it's been trapped here for dozens of winters. Don't worry, Lynch. Get you out. What is that name? Well, the last squid thingy we saw was Diener, so. Oh boy. While I appreciate the attempt at humor, that little brother is truly awful wordplay. Embarrassing, really. Oh, well, and I'll be winners. Ah! There's gotta be a way to clear those rocks. Get a better angle.
Can't get out. Much of the hype matter is gone. We can free it from the surface now. <laughs> Why did they trap it down here? Hafgafas are known to burrow, so I hesitate to place full blame on our dark elf friends. But it's trapped in their hive stuff. Hive matter doesn't belong to the Dark Elves. Any more than the light belongs to the Light Elves. It's just another of Alfheim's natural resources. One the Elves have used since the time of their ancestors. And while the Light Elves seem keen to banish the Hive over on their side, the Dark Elves make effective use of it out here in the Barrens. So, by clearing out all of this Hive, are we hurting Dark Elves? You wish to leave the creature enslaved. Let us free it. We can cut the half goofa loose here. It flies? Of course it flies. It's a half goofa. Sounds much happier now. And hey, the storm's gone. Aye. Perhaps we'll finally earn some goodwill from our Dark Elf friends, after all. Look, Father, thanks for bringing us out here. Don't we'll have to do this kind of stuff just to keep my mind off Ragnarok, you know? This was not a distraction. No? Then why are we really out here? Have you ever considered... He just wants to spend time with you, lad. While he still can. Really? We do not know what lies ahead. But if Ragnarok approaches... I wish to enjoy the time we have left. I... I don't know what to say. Thank you. 
for bringing us out here. I'm glad we did this. As am I. Something I'm not sure I quite understand. In the Ragnarok prophecy Odin knows, all the realms get destroyed, including Asgard. In the version Groa kept secret, Asgard still falls. Wouldn't Odin have tried to prevent it either way? What difference did her life really make? Old. We will finish later. your favorite of Gavassia's poems, brother. Why would I choose a favorite? <laughs> Atreus, you are getting better. Faster. Better than you one day, huh? If you are not, I have failed. Andreas, oh. <laughs> I've been considering your question about whether Groa's deception made a difference. I think of it this way. When it comes to subverting prophecy, knowledge is power. Without the full picture and context, the finer details can lead you to tragically incorrect interpretation. Let this wait. Stay alert. Come here. What's 
the deal with Odin's raven? Can just transport them anywhere? Except for the realm between realms, thankfully. Why? Harder to find, thanks to dwarven enchantment and Yggdrasil's very own nature. Hmm. Lucky us. Done. What's that? A diagram for a sword hilt. Perhaps we should show it to one of the dwarves. They'll know what to do with it. Soldiers we fought in Svartalfheim. Those were Enriar? I thought Enriar were just spirits in Valhalla until Ragnarok comes. They were no spirits. 
Indeed, brother. Odin appears to have found a loophole. Activated his forces early as a standing army. Perhaps something he could only do without any honest Valkyries around to stand in his way. Brother, you ever think of cooking meat with those blades of yours? No. They would foul the meat. Oh, because of the magic on them? The blood. Ah, yes. Carry on then. Looks like a lot of the sand is cleared up. But there's another storm out that way. I think that means... Another half, Gufa. One too angry to die. We will see. Of a prophecy can wreak havoc on the believers. Back in my homeland, 
I was privy to the operations of a certain coven of heath witches who were keen on destabilizing the government. They picked an influential thane, an otherwise loyal man, and fed him a story of his own ascension to king. They dressed it up in enough details they knew would come to pass, so when they did, the thane took it as confirmation. Next thing you know, he's helping matters along. He murders his king, sleeping under his own roof. Murders many he once called friends, too, thinking them fated to oppose him. Then, for a finishing touch, the witches revisit this usurper. With just a few details structured ever so misleadingly, they convinced the fool he was invulnerable to all threats. Physical or magical? Aye, aye, but was not so for him. Set that aside for now. Come. Biggest thing you've ever fought? I do not know. You can't remember? Why do you ask? I don't know. So we can compare? It is not a competition. I mean, not yet. wrap up that story I was telling. The usurping Thane was convinced by the Heath Witches of his own invulnerability. Falsely, as he would learn too late. All turned into a rather magnificent bloodbath as they go. The Thane ends up without his head and a name so cursed, none dare speak it. All thanks to a subtly deceptive prophecy. No more for now. Focus. <laughs> get a chance to say before. I liked your story about the Thane and the Heath Witches. You really gotta write these stories down one day, Mimir. Well, I try. Jaw tends to get sore, but thank you, lad. Sort of a harp. I can play beautifully, you know. I do not. And would prefer it remain that way.
I know this sounds weird, but can you tell me again what happens when someone dies? Every living thing has a soul, and every soul has four parts. Form, mind, direction, and luck. Direction steers the souls of giants, dwarves, elves, and animals toward the lake of souls in Alfheim, that all the parts may be absorbed back into Alfheim's ah! great light. So that's where Fenrir is? The lake of souls? As long as his soul still has its direction, aye, it's well on its way. See you out here, Sentry. You must hate the sand. Oh, it is the worst. But with Brock banned from Alfheim, it's up to me to keep you ship shape and sharp. So why is Brock banned from Alfheim? Oh, that's, um, I don't know if, well, do you know what a juicy Noken is? No. Well, thanks to Brock, the elves sure do. Uh, what is a juicy... No.
Ymir, you were talking about how Fenrir's soul is headed for the Light of Alpha. But that's because he was a wolf, right? Aye. Were he a god or a human who died in battle, a Valkyrie would have taken him to Valhalla or Folkvonger. Had he been a human or god who died outside of battle, he'd be cast down to Helheim. But Fenrir was a wolf, so his soul will join all the others in Alfheim. Like mothers? Yes. Like your mothers. Do we have to be here? Creeping me out, all these poor bastards with their souls cut up. <sighs> Let's do it! Wait, feels like there was something else. Brock, what do you think about fate? I don't. Either your life's all written down somewhere, or it ain't. Still feels like you're making choices either way. The shit smells the same regardless of how it got shat. Remind me to write that down. There's something over here. Ah, a memory of war. You could use this as a training arena if you like. You'll just be fighting the recollections of enemies. They won't be able to harm you. There's nothing. Ah! <laughs> 
Ravens? The ones we've been destroying all this time? So it would seem. Free are we. Free of the Father. Our half lives now belong to no other. What do you think that means? I don't know. But there's definitely something more going on here. 